Hello all, uh, just going to do a quick video today and share with you something really interesting that I've, I've seen today. Uh, I've looked at a lot of V6 heads and um, yeah, just we've got a really graphic indication today of uh, what we see from the factory with uh, standard V6 heads. Um, and I'm going to go into a little bit on compression ratio because quite a few people are asking about compression. So um, yeah, we'll do, do a quick talk and show you why we need to do or CC our combustion chambers if we're getting close to our uh, 9.5 to 1 limit um, stated in the uh, wingless rules, um, why we need to do each one of them. So uh, let's go and have a look and um, get into it. So we've got here a set of, um, from what I can tell, very standard uh, and probably until I've removed them from a wrecker engine untouched, uh, almost from new. And um, I would say that they're a, you know, a pair from the factory, uh, both fitted at the same time. And from what I can see, these have come from a very, very similar batch of heads. Now, what I mean by that is that if we have a look at our combustion chamber here, um, and so looking at the left, the left chamber of the cylinder head, and I've got both these cylinder heads sitting in the same, the same way. Uh, you can see that we've got very little overhang, um, down in this part of the chamber here. But as we move along to the next one, see this overhang we've got here? And then in the end chamber, or right hand end of the head, we've got quite a bit more. Now we go to the next head, and it's basically a carbon copy of the first head virtually no overhang, a little bit on the second one, and the end chamber, we've got a lot. Um, now I've already done the exhaust seats on this one, uh, I haven't touched the inlets just so that I could make this video. Another interesting thing, let's go back, uh, maybe have a look at this right hand end here. Now let's have a look down in here. See that, we've got a groove, a groove around here, We've got, um, you know, quite a wide valve seat. If we go across to the end port on this one, we've got exactly the same thing. Like, it's identical. So it's, you know, almost probably same day they've been manufactured. Um, you can see, faintly, uh, the chatter marks around in here or below my finger there, you can see some little chatter marks at the, from the factory. That's fairly normal in the non-concentric zone, um, but not real prominent. But we go to the middle port, and you can see them easily. Okay, left port, again, very, very hard to see. Uh, similarly, we go to this head. You can only just see them in the right port. The centre, you can see them easily. And on the left end of the cylinder head, hardly at all. Um, and you can also see by this very wide top cut here from the factory, very, very wide top cut, not so wide, and quite narrow. And again the same on this right hand, on the head we've got here, big wide top cut, uh, not so wide, and, and quite, quite narrow, sorry, on the inlet side there. Um, so that's why when we're getting close to our compression ratio rule of 9.5, if your cylinder block's been decked and you're running your pistons a bit closer to the top, um, and obviously there are different dish pistons, whether it's uh, sort of VN Series 2 or the VR will have different different dish pistons. I think most people are running the, v, the VR piston nowadays anyway. Um, you can, you know, bring yourself unstuck if you only CC one chamber. So, so the difference we're seeing in these uh, top cuts is not is not how it's been cut really. So, these would have been cut on a machine where the the cutting tool came down the same depth uh, on each on each inlet port. So, the cylinder head would have been sitting on a flat surface, and the machine at the factory would have come down the same depth on each one. What, what you're seeing is that it's just that the casting is higher in some cylinders than the other. Um, and that's why it looks so far different. Uh, but in actual fact, these, these heights from, you know, this base or datum of the head is the same. I've, I've measured the height of both heads and they're pretty much identical. So, um, yes, and as far as CCing goes, that, that involves um, dropping, dropping some valves in usually put a little bit of rubber grease around the face of the valve to get it to seat, uh, seal, uh, drop the exhaust valve in, 
screw a spark plug into the plug hole. Um, then we drop a bit of perspex on top. Okay, and we take what we call a burette, which is a fairly scientific piece of equipment. Um, and this is graduated in cc's so you can see there 38 36 34 32 so we fill this burette right to the top and we drain some out till the water level or caro level whichever you're using is right on the zero we've got a tap down here okay and then we we measure how much liquid it takes to fill that combustion chamber all right so yeah, we need to, you know, I guess that's why there's a difference in price in cylinder heads. When you're getting close to your 9.5, we need to check every chamber. In the off chance you've got a smaller chamber or a different volume, and one of your chambers is going to go over 9.5 to 1. Okay, if you're down around 9, when we check one, if we, if we calculate that you've got around 9 to 1 compression and you're happy with that, then we generally... You know, we don't have to spend as much time checking every chamber. We'll check one chamber from each head, generally, if that's the case, to keep the costs a bit lower. But if you're getting up close to nine point, you know, nine point, anything nine point three or more, we will do. We'll do every chamber.